good. All right. In that case, let's come to order at 6.02 and hope that our colleagues will be able to um, join us with the meeting in progress. Um, just like, first of all, to welcome all of you uh, to this last board meeting of the school year. Uh, we'll have occasion to allude to this milestone, I think, on uh, at, at several points during the course of the meeting. But um, I, it's not as though it's the end of anything, really. It's, um, it will just be continuing at um, pretty nearly full throttle uh, even after this, um, after this meeting. And, and uh, to move on to 2.2, agenda revisions, just to give you a, a sense of that continuity. Um, one revision that I will add to um, future agenda items is to note the possibility, uh, it's, it's not scheduled yet, but um, worth penciling in, the possibility of, would we call it an emergency board meeting, a special board meeting? Uh, I don't know what the nomenclature would special. be. Special. Special board special. meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, to address uh, fund balances. This will depend on what happens at the legislature, which um, we'll hear about from Lori during um, the uh, finance part of the meeting. Um, so that that's June 30th, possible special meeting. All right. Um, public comments. Um, 2.3. Scott, if I may, uh, yes. uh, uh, an agenda Jonas. revision I'd like to ask for. Please. I would, I, uh, under uh, 8.0 executive session, I would like to add a uh, discussion of negotiations and I would like to put 4.4 after the executive session to give the board uh, an opportunity to discuss the state of negotiations with the ESP group uh, and delay any action on uh, the contract uh, sorry, I guess we could just move 4.4.1 to after that, but we could leave 4.4.2 uh, where it is in the agenda. Very good. Um, all right. Uh, are there any objections to including discussion of negotiations in Executive Session 8.0 and shifting 4.4.1, approval of the union ESP contract for 2020-2021, to immediately after 8.0? I don't hear any objections, so let's do that. Thank All right. You. Thank you very much, Jonas. Um, 2.3, public comments. Do we have any public comments? Uh, Scott, this is Amy. Amy, yes. Hi, sorry, my video is not working great, um, but I just wanted to say thank you very much um, to the board and um, for all of you for our lovely face masks and signs. Um, they were really, very well received by our faculty and staff. Um, and it definitely um, was a wonderful thing for them to get yesterday. And it was awesome to come home and find mine um, this weekend after a, a long uh, graduation. So thank you very much for that. Um, it's very kind of you to say, Amy. And uh, needless to say, it was long and, and uh, I thought um, just uh, an amazingly wonderful graduation. Um, that goes for all of you, Stephen, um, Jody, the whole crew. Uh, very well done. Um, thanks. Uh, we're still on public comments. Okay. Um, then let's go to student report. Um, Mia, I, it's great to see you, but. Do you still qualify as a student? You always will be in our hearts. <laughs> Thanks, Scott. Um, I don't know, I guess technically. No, not, technically not. But <laughs> Technically not, but, but yeah. Um, but uh, I don't see towns here. So um, I, may we call on you to um, give us the student report? I would happily do that. Last um, report. Yes. Mm -hmm. I think the latest biggest thing to happen would have been graduation, which was really great. And I, as a senior and all the seniors, we would love to thank 
Jody and Steven and Amy and everybody who made that possible. It was re really great to have at least something that we could all do. And it was nice that we were thought of and it was really well done. And everybody who came to mind really <laughs> loved it. They were like, wow, it was so well put together and organized. And we also had an event two-ish weeks ago. The last time I think I talked to you guys, I had said that it was the anniversary of the Black Lives Matter flag raising. And we did have a little event seeking social justice and blam a little bit put on a unity power, we called it. And some people spoke and Kaya Morris came, which was really great. And she was able to speak. And that was really great. And I think speaking on that, I know the U32 board had the flag policy and they were really involved in that. And I think as my last meeting here and thinking about what I've been doing at U32, I think it would really be great if the board, I think Town spoke about this a little bit last time, but especially being a unified board, it would be really great and really cool to see not just U32, but it would be more of a district message and focus on race, not just at U32, but also specifically in the elementary schools. I think that would be really great. Blam had been doing some stuff and I think it would be really cool if the school board could also be involved in that and really meaningful. Thank you, Mia. I wanted to let you know that Towns had joined us, Scott. Oh, Towns is here. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm late. Uh, <laughs> I uh, just got home. It's not a, not a problem at all, Towns. Um, uh, I, I we just got an email, Deborah and I from Jael, and she's running late as well. So you're in good company. Um, I, would you like to add to what Mia was just saying? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I only kind of got the uh, end of it, but I, you know, I, I think that it's one of the most important things that we can do as a district is focus on issues of racism um, in this district. And, um, you know, uh, it's, and not just, you know, responding to outside incidents that cause us to, you know, put forth a statement or, um, you know, engage in discussions, but also proactively having these discussions and talking about um, race and racism in our in in our district in a way that is equitable in a way that um, uh, acknowledges people's needs and both uh, how our district is succeeding and failing. Um, thank you, Towns. This uh, floor. Um, this sounds like an interesting um, element to build into a retreat agenda. Um, you think so? Sounds good. Yeah. 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 Great part. Okay. Super. Thank we, you. We also, um, I've asked the policy committee to have a discussion about it as well uh, for the possibility of uh, formulating a policy that would address many of these matters and a draft one is going to be in their upcoming packet and towns if you're available next tuesday um and you'd like to join us we'd really appreciate your feedback and input on that wonderful this is one of the virtues of having a, a high-powered policy committee um thank you all um anything else uh, any questions for the students from board members If not, we can move into 3.0 and board operations and specifically superintendent transition update. Um, Deborah, would you like to lead off? I will. Uh, I've been continuing to communicate with Brian. Uh, he joined our leadership team meeting on Monday where we were talking about our in-service last Monday, excuse me, uh, when we were planning for our in-service this week and initiating our work on the summer, for the summer in re regards to our fall reopening planning. And um, as you might recall, he'll be joining the leadership team at the end of June for their two day retreat on the 25th and 26th. Uh, he has also been meeting with other members of the team 
Um, and I spoke with him today. So, you know, we've been actively um, involved and informed about things that are occurring at the end of the school year so as to make the transition a little easier. That's great. Thank you very much, Deborah. Fleur, did you have something? I just wanted to that I, I had a conversation with Brian around, you suggested that we send him information if we had anything else, or I just asked him about the retreat and he was wanting to surprise us, they join us today, but he's on vacation with his family, so send an email uh, today just saying that he would, uh, as we met uh, for the agenda the last time we talked informally about maybe having a meet and greet on July 1st or July 8th, and he's open for either as part of his uh, transition. And then as he gets to know the team better, he was thinking of a retreat in August and he had uh, different uh, things from having a facilitator to where we do it. Uh, but we can talk about that when we meet and greet uh, with him, but he was very excited about doing that. So uh, today we could decide as a board, which day, um, as you know, the, the agenda prepping committee said, uh, you know, either July 1st or July 8th might be a good time, but we haven't talked to that to the bigger board. And there's a memo um, on page three of the board packet that just to get you started in thinking about that, uh, but I'm certain it will be helpful if a decision could be made uh, before you conclude your meeting tonight. Right, amen. Thank you very much, everybody. And um, from my side, and you may recall two weeks ago, I mentioned that um, I was helping w Brian put together the uh, contract for his mentors. Um, two mentors, one a Vermont-based mentor and the other a, um, uh, a sort of broader professional mentor. And we're, we've just been working through some, um, since I, I guess, there are some peculiarities to these contracts regarding the, um, the presence or absence of professional liability insurance and other sorts of um, technical uh, features that um, Lori has been helping us on. And Lori has, as usual, is trying to protect us from ourselves, make sure that we, um, that we don't uh, inadvertently get ourselves into any trouble. So, um, I think we're on the verge of, of having um, uh, one of those mentor contracts, the one, uh, the, the general professional mentoring. And there is uh, an earlier mentor candidate um, uh, bowed out. Um, and, uh, but there's a new one sort of in the works. So I think um, it's, uh, it's, looking, it's looking positive. So I hope that we can get that sorted out and um, have uh, give Brian his mentors um, forthwith. So any questions, Lindy? Isn't that usually something done through the Vermont Superintendents Association, and a, all that kind of paperwork would be done as far as um, the legalities? Well, the. Um, uh, that's exactly how it happens to the Vermont Principals Association. But I gather that the Vermont Superintendents Association has, um, doesn't do it anywhere near as often. It, for the Principals Association as well, it's, a, um, it's written into state law that principals, new principals have to have mentors. Um, and it's just, for us, it's, it's a best practice at least we're, can, we're approaching it that way. Um, so I, I think, you know, we wanna give uh, our new first time superintendent um, the support he needs in order to succeed. Um, and we just have to make sure that we um, get the technicalities right. Will he be going through the Leadership Academy with the Superintendents Association? I think that's his intention, yeah. Yeah. Other questions? Okay, then uh, thank you. Let's move on to 3.2, board meeting summer schedule on page three. So um, you heard me mention the possibility, which I hope 
doesn't turn into the reality of, uh, of a special meeting on the 30th. Uh, otherwise, what we have in mind is, um, and, and Fleur uh, and Jonas and Diane and Jill, um, please step in if, I'm, if I garble any of this. Um, on July 1st, what we have in mind is a, um, a meeting like this at the usual time, um, but without an agenda. Uh, just to say hello to Brian on his first day, um, let him see your face, uh, and and I think engage in um, in just some conversation back and forth, um, so that he starts to get a feel of of who we are both as individuals and as as a group. Um, and I don't see this meeting lasting a long time. Um, I, I don't intend to shut it down if it's you know if it's a a, a roaring great time, but um, but I don't uh, I don't see it as anything more than just uh, uh, really a, a kind of nice thing to do at the end of his first day of work, first day on the job. Um, for the fifteenth, we're proposing regular board meeting, um, basically the usual shtick. Uh, including committees. Um, and you can see for the, the rest for yourself. Um, uh, retreat on the 5th and regular board meeting on the 19th. So um, uh, you've seen the questions. Um, sound good to you? Doable? Um, Fleur. Question: the The July first. Are you seeing that as in person meeting? Because it would be less than twenty five or a Zoom meeting. Zoom. Yeah, I think it. Um, I, I don't think we're at in person yet, unless we're standing out in you know in the field uh, on the soccer field at U thirty two. Uh, Stephen. Um, so. Uh if we have to have a special meeting on the 30th and then a meet and greet on the 1st, um, isn't it, is it, is there a possibility we could combine those, particularly hearing that you envision the 1st not being a long meeting instead of having to meet two consecutive nights? Yeah, um, that, that would be a, um, a very reasonable suggestion. I'm, I'm not sure. Technically, Brian is not our superintendent until the first, but we can still meet and greet him, I guess, on the 30th. He, he just won't have, you know, done anything. Deborah will still be the superintendent. We'd be meeting him as, you know, um, the, uh, you know, the, ne the, the guy who is it the next day. But we, I, I think Stephen has a point. We can uh, we can ask Brian just because this would be a decision that will affect him too, especially. Exactly. So, yeah. So he has a big yeah. take on this decision, so we could potentially do both at the same. Okay. Time. Yeah. Um, it, it makes all kinds of sense. Um, is there any protocol problem that you would see with this, Deborah? No, not at all. And I, I understand that the board wouldn't want to meet twice in one week, especially although no one's really traveling now. That is the typical week when people try to, you know, kind of reduce their workload as opposed to, you know, adding to it because it's of the 4th of July that weekend. Uh, but one thought would be, um, you know, certainly the meet and greet is a fine idea. Uh, you had also mentioned earlier floor the 8th of July. And, and then you do have a regular meeting on the 15th, as, unless you choose to cancel that. I know in the past you've not met in July and have just skipped it and gone over to August. So I think this discussion and action would be helpful for our staff and for planning as well. Um, yeah, uh, you're, you're right, Deborah. I think that week is the week that we will all want to pretend we're on vacation. Pretend, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Stephen, let's go with that idea of yours. Yeah, if we, if it turns out, um, and I hope that it doesn't turn out that we have to meet on the 30th, we would combine the two if we do. Um, and if we don't, um, if the 30th remains, um, 
theoretical only uh, should and and should we go with the first are, are you up for that you will have to warn the meetings in both of the meetings then is that what you're asking us to do have two meetings one on the third and one on the first or well, just I'm sorry to be it just that that takes yeah. time and it's of it's course not a matter of Let's just, sorry Chris go ahead to say if we're gonna try and combine them Let's just pick the 30th and if the special meeting falls out you still have the meet and greet rather than okay. trying to shift them yeah. just for scheduling purposes okay yeah okay that let's do that sense. all right so um 30th then mark your calendars please um mm -hmm. and and right the possibility of that we might just um uh, cancel july 15 if it if it seems that we can um there's no pressing business that we need to get to and just give everybody a well-deserved break. Um, in terms of in-person meetings, um, I know everybody prefers those, but in the current circumstances with masks and social distancing, um, they're not optimal, perhaps. So uh, what is your sense? Is Zoom... Um, Zoom okay, or uh, would you like to try it for an in-person um, later on the summer? Um, Flora and then Kari. So Brian in, in his email has expressed that he wants a, the retreat to be in person, you know, trying to follow all the COVID-19 for the retreat with the board. He would like it to be in person. He actually would prefer that it's a weekend day. So we are set and it's more informal. And that is, uh, you know, breakfast and lunch in August. So I think once he is with us, he unfortunately couldn't be with us today. We could talk about moving uh, the date of August 5th to, to a weekend day. I know that that is a hardship in a lot of us, but it, he believes that it, it sets the board on a way to be able to have a more informal uh, conversation. So I just wanted to put that uh, that out there. So I, I am fine with meeting in person following COVID, especially if it's just us uh, with the guidance of the governor, we can meet up to 25. So I feel comfortable with that. Yeah, okay. All right. Um, so that, that would seem to incline us towards an answer to question number three on that memo on page three. Um, should the board appoint a committee to plan the summer retreat? Um, uh, the board. I, before we go too much further, I'd just like to say that I'm, at this point, not comfortable meeting in person. Things may be different in August, but if there is an in-person meeting, I would like to make sure that we have a remote Zoom option available as well. Right. Okay. Very good. So, uh, Dorothy. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, uh, sorry, I, I skipped you, Kari. Um, Dorothy, do you mind if I... Kari, go ahead. Okay. Well, I mean, Flora's point kind of changes, but I was going to suggest that uh, in the interest of uh, safety that we consider flipping the retreat and the, and the regular August meeting um, so that we could do the regular meeting by Zoom and do the retreat in person. I think retreats lend themselves to being in person a little bit more. And um, I, th I feel like we should, we should stay remote for as long as we can, but by the time we're asking students and staff to come to person, we should probably be going in person as well, with, and with an option to remote. I, I think that's an appropriate. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Kari. And, and Dorothy. Um, I I just want to be sure that if we say we're going to have a meet and greet, and we need to limit by open meeting law, I'm assuming we cannot limit it and ask the public not to come, but would be difficult of what a lot of people decide they want to come and meet the new superintendent before we've even had a chance to. So I, I don't know how you get around that. I just wanted to bring it to the forefront. Yeah, um, uh, you're right. It will be a warned open meeting. Um, I guess I'll just have to uh, concentrate on giving board members the opportunity to interact with Brian and um, the public would be in more of a listening mode in this case. I know that Brian um, has a plan, an entry plan, which includes um, 
developing contacts with um, with members of the public um, and families and and you know uh, various sectors of um, of our population. So uh, I, I know he's sensitive to that, and will will be making room for that in in his um, in his summer entry plan. Uh, are there other uh, concerns? Should should we? Um, does anybody want to volunteer for um, for a retreat planning group? Uh, looks like at least two of the usual suspects. Um, wait, wait till the meet and greet to find out what kind of retreat he's thinking about. Maybe it doesn't matter for planning. I was just I, curious. I think Floor, um, Floor, uh, my understanding from what I've heard from Brian, Floor communicated his his sort of uh, druthers pretty pretty well. I mean, um, that's my understanding of um, weekend in person, um, perhaps you know the better part of a day of um, of just intensive yeah. togetherness. He, he he pretty much has just two main questions and what are people's concerns and expectations in, uh, you know, it's a little more long than that, but I'll forward his email to everybody and what are people's three priorities, but he, uh, you know, that combined with, he he's really wants a facilitator. So I don't think that the group would be, so the group would be planning it with him, but this mm -hmm. would be one of several retreats so he's also from the mind that we should uh, clarify our expectations so that we know that we would have retreats at least every six months and and i personally would like to finish the the book work with the with everybody in the governance and set our norms and stuff like that too so but did you say a retreat every six months yeah an ongoing yeah an ongoing series of retreats yeah and advances the rest of the time yeah so may i just return you back to the question at hand um right now you the board has approved four dates for the summer and you've decided on Jan on june 30th instead of july 1 uh, but the 15th, 5th, and 19th are on your schedule. So I think you have to take action if you're going to deviate from those dates. You can decide what you do during them. Um, someone talked about a Saturday retreat versus the week of, of August 5th or maybe both. And um, I just wanted to be sure we had them on the calendar and you made the, you took action on that. If you could, please. Thank you. Thank you, Deborah. So, um, Instead of August 5th, should we put August 8th board retreat? Okay. Um, so in place of August 5th, see August 8th board retreat and August 19th regular board meeting, including committees. And you'll keep your July 15th regular meeting or will that be canceled? Um, What's the what's the mood of the room? Do you want to um, do you want to have a break? Well, yeah. Let me see where we're in terms of the COVID and new guidance from the AOE and what it may require if we're going to open up. So I would I'd say we can always cancel it last minute um, because that seems like a, a quite a gap then for me. I you agree with Chris. Okay, I heard Marilyn um, agreeing with Chris. So keep the 15th for now, and we cancel it if there's really nothing particularly pressing to do. Is that is that the right understanding? Yes. yes. Um, and to follow up on, on Kari's uh, suggestion, Kari, did you, was it your intention to suggest Flipping the August dates so that the meeting would be earlier on the 5th and that the retreat would be later on the 19th, just using the dates that were previously established. Is that what your, your suggestion was? Yes, and, and um, 
that would have the other advantage of having the other committees meet get get a meeting in as opposed to having the two committee meetings be in the same place if i'm making any sense and the, but the main advantage would be that we could keep those meetings by zoom and then have the retreat in person which i think is um, beneficial and we could look to have that potentially on say that saturday you know, the you know, the third week in august Okay, so um, at this point, what we have, uh, there's a proposal to um, flip the meeting with the August board, regular board meeting with the board retreat. So August, fit, uh, August 5, then, would be the regular board meeting, including committees. And August 22nd, I guess it would be Saturday, August 22nd, Actually, would be... Scott, yes, Chris. It would be the, the Fifth, the third Saturday, there are five Saturdays this August. So the third Saturday would be the 15th. Just as a, doesn't matter to me, I'm just, there's five Saturdays in August this year. How lucky we are. Um, well, what is your preference? Um, the 15th or the 22nd? Uh, Stephen and then Lindy? Um, I, I, it's impossible for me to meet on a weekend in August past the 15th, the 15th would be a possibility. Um, but on a Saturday for the rest of August and probably the first two or three weeks in September, I do not have a Saturday free. Nor kids start coming back um, August 10th, but I could probably not work the 15th. But anything as Saturday, anything beyond the 15th, doesn't prevent the whole group, but uh, it would be impossible for me to attend. Yeah, understood. Thank you. Lindy? I'm concerned that the 22nd is too close for admin. I don't know that admin participates, but the um, superintendent is going to be up to over his head with beginning of school and all the things that happen when school is starting, as well as the um, administration. So I oh. think that the 15th is the latest we should expect that kind of participation as we're going into the buildup of school. Okay. Um, thank you very much. In that case, what I'm hearing is convergence toward the following lineup of meetings. June 30th, possible special meeting and meet and greet new superintendent. Um, July 15, regular board meeting, including committees, with the possibility of canceling it if there is not, um, uh, if, if there's, you know, no pressing need for it. Um, August 5th, regular board meeting, including committees. August 15, board retreat. Did I get that right? Uh, Scott, this is Diane. My son's getting married on the 15th, so I will not be Congratulations, here. Diane. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, we're hitting the statistical um, thing where um, what, whatever what did we... If, what about if we leave the, uh, the July 15th, since we are all not traveling, and do the committees and stuff, and then take the break, and then take the break August fifth, and just have the retreat on August eighth, that Saturday, and then we get done with the retreat, and uh, you know it still gives us a break, and and we okay. get the committee work. So July fifteenth, we keep that meeting, and August fifth is a pass. August eighth, we do the retreat. All right. So um, let me see if, uh, if, if I get this. Um, June 30, possible special meeting, meet and greet. July 15, regular board meeting and plan on that. With committees. With committees, right. Um, August 8th, board retreat. And then August 19, regular board meeting. Is that, um, I'm, I'm seeing nodding heads. 
Yeah, yes. Anybody want to move that? So, so moved. moved. Okay. Well, oh. second, second. okay, floor moves, Chris seconds. Very good. Lisa, um, and <laughs> um, uh, Lisa, did you, um, we kind of uh, danced around that a little bit. Um, did you get that okay? I, I got the dates. Who, who, who made the motion and seconded it? Fleur made the motion and Chris seconded. Okay, so if you go to your participants, if you don't already have your participants screen up, um, as we move to a vote, uh, please click on the green yes button if you're in favor of the meetings as moved and seconded, um, or the no button if you're opposed. And I'm seeing um, all, oh, Kari, uh, I see a no from Kari. It's not my preference. I, I won't be available on the 8th, but that's oh, fine. OK, it's OK, yeah. Um, I'm sorry about that, yeah. Um, I may not be available on the 8th as well. OK, well, you know. Um, We'll just, this is what we've got for now. And we may, um, you know, we're always adapting and, and uh, making um, changes as we go forward. So um, we may yet do that, but at least we have a plan. So um, we have a plan that we can change. <laughs> Thanks everybody. All right. Um, so uh, reports, superintendent report, page four. And um, I should just point out before you start, Deborah, that this is your last meeting with us. And I'd just like to extend um, on behalf of the board and myself our, our thanks and appreciation for um, a year that feels like a decade <laughs> and for getting us through this. Um, uh, not only safely, but but um, I think trailing clouds of glory. So much appreciated. Thank you. And um, I did want to make a couple of comments beyond what's in my written report, because I think you've had a chance to review that. Um, we have begun to organize our work groups for fall reopening, as I mentioned in the finance committee meeting. And uh, we've done that by uh, setting aside uh, five areas in which we are organizing task force, each led by three administrators. And um, we have also been requesting our, or inviting our staff to volunteer to participate. The first meetings will be held on Friday. So far we've had 79 responses, which is really great. Uh, and we may have more people volunteer than we actually have space available on our committees, but we'll do our best to accommodate the many interested people. Um, <clears throat> the work that will be underway as a result of that will continue on through the summer. Uh, we have, um, for those staff who are not under contract in the summer, we will be providing them with per diem or hourly um, payment because that is something not only contractual, but something that we feel obliged to do because they'll be devoting their time to assisting us. Uh, we also are, um, looking forward to digging more deeply into the guidance that was just sent out, as I mentioned earlier, from the AOE about safe and healthy opening. Uh, and that's going to help us to uh, frame a lot of the work that's going to be underway. Um, we have set up some guiding principles for our work and uh, the survey, as I said, has received a positive response. We know many people are interested in having input and hearing about the process as it unfolds. I would say that there's, we're looking at potentially three models that, can, for, that we'll be planning for contingency. Our number one goal is an in-person fall opening. Uh, but we're also planning for a hybrid model, which might be a combination and then a full remote model. And any of those could be implemented during the course of the year, depending upon our guidance from the health department and the CDC. Uh, but we'll have more information and I'm certain not only during our meetings, but we'll, uh, we have a communication plan, a, whole, a group that's focusing primarily on communication and we'll be um, 
involve informing the community and the board about what we've been studying and where we are with our, our plan as it's underway. So uh, I'm feeling glad that we were able to get one meeting in um, into that work. So that's that's been great before the school year officially ends. Um, we also are um, pleased with the work of our committees that the board has been very active in uh, within the, both within this committee and also outside of the board meetings. Um, this evening, we had a finance committee, which we'll be reporting on later on. Our negotiations team uh, will be um, having some information to share following our executive session regarding the ESP contract. Uh, we have, as you recall, adopted our charge for the Ed Quality Committee and a calendar for the um, monthly work plan that's been established. Uh, so overall, we've really been working hard and a special thanks to our policy committee who had a very large task uh, this year, which was to review all of our adapted policies. And uh, we nearly made it. We still have a meeting coming up, right, Chris, next week. So we do. We, we might just make it before June 30, but we'll, we have a contingency plan for your consideration for action a little bit later on. And um, I can address this during finance. There's a couple of, based upon your schedule for um, board meetings, we may need your permission to approve two bids for summer construction. But I'll get back to that when we have our finance committee discussion and our bid discussion. And once again, thank you all so very much, our leadership team, our staff, students, and the board for um, what I think has been a challenging but uh, satisfying year. Happy to hear it. Thanks, Deborah. Um, questions for Deborah from board members? If not, we can move on to the leadership team. And in this case, I have to address you all collectively, but I, I don't know how on earth you manage to maintain the cohesion of a school when everybody is dispersed to the winds. But yet, it seems to have happened, and it, it's um, it's like a quasi miracle to me. But it sounds as though um, the end of the year was um, was a good experience for your students. And um, I, I, I greatly appreciate the, the reports that you gave and the links that you include. Um, rather than, uh, I mean, maybe what I should do is just uh, let, give you a chance to, um, to just say something, um, you know, just to one sentence to sum up the entire school year. Is that possible? I, I don't know, Aaron, um, you're lucky that Berlin comes first. You get to have no time whatsoever to think about your answer. Unless you're pretending not to be there. <laughs> or, or, He's probably thinking, why don't we yeah. go backwards and start with you 32? <laughs> okay, Stephen. Yeah, so um, I apologize, I might have a shaky internet connection here, but um, one sentence to, to, to sum it all up. Um, it was a marathon that turned into a sprint that turned into a um, road race that turned into a NASCAR <laughs> rally that turned into a, a train wreck that we then came out of. So it was, it was great. Like I, I wouldn't change a thing this year. <laughs> It was. I will say this: our staff is the most amazing group of people that have ever walked the planet, and uh, and they are the ones who should be getting the all allocates for um, for a job well done and keeping our school together, even virtually. Thanks very much. That was that was beautifully put. Very vivid. <laughs> um, who comes next? Going backwards. Uh, that would be Casey. Casey. Our attendance to follow, Stephen. Um, I would say that we, as a as a school community, we learned a lot along the way. We overcame a lot, and I think we had um, a lot to be proud of at the end. I think we ended the year for sixth graders, for our staff, in meaningful ways, um, even having overcome all of the challenges. So we did it. 
Yeah, that you did. Um, Alicia? Yeah, um, I think my sentence would be, I'm not sure how, but we did it. Um, and just, I would echo what both Casey and Steven said, we had in service this morning district-wide, so we had the opportunity to spend part of the morning in mixed groups with people from across all buildings and just how proud we all are of the work and the commitment um, and the time we did some reflecting this morning. I'm not sure they know how they did it, but somehow we arrived at the end. That's great. And, and fortunately, now that we're at the E's, I know what comes before E. So Gillian. <laughs> uh, I would say um, that is is the um, strength that comes from going through a fire and echoing what Alicia said is I was just really struck um, in in service with with people from across the district and across from from Doty that the amount of gratitude and joy people were able to find um, even having been through this is a real testament to, um, I think, the district as a whole. Thank you very much. Um, your turn, Kat. So um, I'm thinking about not just Callis, but just our district as a whole. I we have all gone gone through so much this year that um, I think it's really important for us to keep in mind how much we have to learn about ourselves personally, and professionally, um, when things go well and when things don't go well. And man, we rocked so many things. Um, I was very inspired. Alicia was alluding to this earlier. Uh, so inspired by the work that we did this morning um, with our staff. because This was the last day when all staff will be together. Um, and we're ending this on a note of reflection and, and making meaning from what we've learned. It's my hope for staff that they really do take some time. It's for all of you as well that we take some time to refresh and rejuvenate this, this summer as best that we can. Um, and take that learning into the fall. Take that learning into the fall. Hey, Aaron had an internet issue, but he should be back now. Aaron, are you? I did. Can you, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> Having the worst luck. Um, but I guess that's kind of uh, how things go sometimes with how things have changed. And uh, just did over what everybody else has said. Um, and I think, um, you know, not just speaking also to Berlin or about Berlin, but just our whole our whole district, I think uh, it has made everybody stronger. Um, I think uh, having an understanding from 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 parents and the and the community um, and patience through through all of this, i've I've noticed be real strong, and that's that's excellent. Um, Teachers have had a real hard time, and uh, as we've reflected today, uh, it's been a stressful end of the year. Um, and I think we're we're gearing up to help reduce even some more of those stresses as we plan for for, for the fall. Great. Uh, we, could we have Lori and Kelly and Jen say a few? Uh, uh, of that? course, I, I would love to hear their summations of the year. Alphabetical order, right? Um, so we've had a great appreciation for the investment this district has made in the technology area and in the technology staff. Our staff and fiscal office have been working remotely, and we greatly appreciate all of this investment. I just have to say that. And I think um, as much as we work with technology every day, the thing that we've all had to learn is how to do remote meetings like Zoom, and people have been really excited about this learning opportunity to do this. So I guess on a positive note, we're ending on a happy note too. So that's all I had to add. That's great. Thanks, Lori. I guess in reverse alphabetical order, then Kelly would be up next. Yeah, uh, I would definitely echo what all of the principals said. And, you know, I shared it in our um, closing in-service um, 
talk this morning, um, really just about how proud I am to work in the system in which I am working in and the resilient staff we have in every single role across this district and the leadership team as well. Um, it's been really hard, but we are a resilient group that has learned a lot that will only um, make us stronger going forward. Thank you, Kelly. And Jen, you have the grand wrap up, it seems to me. Um, I will say that I think that this year for us underscored the importance of establishing strong relationships. We were able to lean into those relationships when times were tough and that really contributed to our success. We all learned so much in such a short amount of time and gave ourselves a lot of permission to make mistakes and iterate and do better. I think that was really important for us. I think that um, having taken the time when uh, school was dismissed to, uh, to share, to figure out our guiding principles and then make our decisions based on those guiding principles served us very well throughout this journey. And we have, about 50 teachers who have signed up to engage in virtual curriculum camp next Monday and Tuesday. And that I think is a testament to the commitment of the educators in this system. I am proud to work here and um, they are amazing. Thank you very much, Jen. And, and Lindy has pointed out to me um, quite rightly that I have neglected Keith McMartin. Um, Keith. Can you sum it all up in one sentence? Maybe two. Oh, one sentence to can do justice, really. Uh, <laughs> That's your sentence? <laughs> we can't hear you too well. Um, Keith, can you speak up a little? I can try. Um, is that any better? No. Hold on. Okay, is that any better? We, if you just speak up, we can hear you fine. Just okay. speak up a little. Fantastic. You know, the vagaries of technology. That's my <laughs> sentence. Amen. Um, so, I, you know, of course, I, I would echo what everybody else has said before me. Um, I never thought that I would get sick of working with technology, but this has pushed me almost to that limit. Um, <laughs> There have definitely been days when I have been on uh, Zoom meetings for eight plus hours and it is, oh yeah. So, um, you know, I'm really happy like as a technologist and as somebody who uh, really is interested in technology, I have been really happy to see how technology could help us in this situation. And I'm looking forward to, um, working over the summer to see how we can, you know, sort of do even better when we have some more time to plan and to prepare. And I think we're going to need that uh, going into next year. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, but I'm also looking forward to uh, stepping away from the screen a little bit this summer, I think. So that's that's my take on it. I believe it. Though, though, Keith, if you're if you're able to do eight <laughs> hours of Zoom meetings, then you're ready for the school board. Keep it in mind. Well, Keith was a school board member. I know he was. I know <laughs> was. he's ready yeah. again. <laughs> yeah, I just wanted to say a special thank you for our departing staff and a welcome to our new hires, which are summarized uh, as of last Friday in your packet on page ten and eleven for the, cent for the uh, schools. So um, if you would all take a moment to look at them and look at that list and uh, be thankful for the hard work of our team and welcome our uh, incoming folks, that'd be great. Yes, and um, although I don't know everyone, uh, from U32, there are some major um, uh, retirements here um, and I just I know everybody uh, everybody is deserving of, of note 
but um, someone, uh, Kathy Topping, who um, who has been at U32 since, I mean, she was president of the creation, was she not, Stephen? Um, so this is really the end of, of an era. Um, but for all of them, um, gratitude and and welcome to the to the new ones and i'm i'm they have big shoes to fill but um I, i'm sure that everyone who's around will help them um fill those shoes do board members have any uh have any uh for the comments um yes mark chaplin as well not to be but he's still there for now right yes good um uh, any uh, any board comments, questions for the leadership team before we move on? If not, then I believe finance committee is next. Floor, would you like to take the lead on this? Uh, sure, uh, Lori, you can correct me if I'm wrong in any of this. Uh, we we had a, a an hour meeting today. And what we decided is that we would just give you the, the highlights uh, of, uh, of, of the finance. Uh, I'm assuming everybody had a chance to look at the, the update from, from Lori. So I'm gonna read a few notes that I, that, that I make from the meeting, if that's okay with everybody. And then you can ask some questions. Uh, so Lori reported to the board on, you can see it on page four. Well, it was on page four of the package. I'm not sure of our finance. It's further down here, but um, let me see. We have on page 12 of your a board packet. Okay. Page 12. Mm -hmm. So the couple of things that I thought were not, as you all know, we have a, a projected to be 1.7 million above our 2% target for, for this year. And you saw that on Deborah's report too. Uh, we have 139,800 above budget is one of the biggest changes from the last time that you guys looked at that at the report that um, we saw at our last meeting. Um, and with the, it's been, um, let me see, it hadn't been, in the, in the last report, we also didn't include a, the, from a, the closed down savings, we have about 616,000 on, and primarily those item, items are busing, instructional close down, subsidies, athletics and support programs. Um, and then the last thing that I noted that I thought was important for us, is Scott already talked about it, is that we as a district have uh, a, a, have passed a, the the voters allows us to to keep our a projected fund balance a, that we can use it for operational, a, but depending on what is going on on the legislation, where Lori is keeping a a uh, good eye as she said she looked at uh, she was watching and hearing to uh, what was going on today uh, if they change the language we might need to have that meeting uh, possibly on the 20 we already decided we we're having it on the 29th if necessary so that we can allocate uh, there were possibly two actions uh, and i let lori uh, Talk about talk about that, but mainly we would have to have a dedicate dedicate those funds so that we don't have to return them uh, to for to adjust the task burden in the to to our taxpayers. So there's some legislature, uh, some uh, some moving parts. I gotta say at the state house right now that might require us to uh, to take action sooner so that we can have better. Um, grip on that fund balance and i'll let Lori talk because that this is more her area of expertise i'm actually going to look at page 16 if you could please turn to that page and at the bottom i had drafted up as a note just some things that we might want to think about um that if we had to act um because our fund balance might be in jeopardy of being returned um, without us having control over it, things we might want to talk about. So they're in yellow at the um, bottom of that page. I don't know if you're seeing them. It says possible reserve for future transportation aid of 54,000. Um, the board already authorized the summer food program, but we might need to restrict it further because and put a year in there 
and you know, and say it's for fiscal year 2021. Um, we might need to reserve fund balance for some special ed contracts that we're currently working on. And um, depending on what happens with the CARES um, reimbursements, we might need to reserve some of that for CARES, um, which is the COVID relief fund. Um, so those were things I had noted at the time. That was before I met um, with this legislative group that um, has prepared testimony. Uh, tomorrow is the day that I believe they're going to act um, in the legislature. And I've been looking forward to seeing what the final wording is and whether or not we have to have any of these motions on the June 30th meeting. Did I cover all that floor? Is that what you had expected? Okay, great. Yeah. yeah. And, and then the last part of our, our meeting, we briefly uh, looked at the efficiency report and, and we have to dig a little deeper into it before we send uh, any recommendations to, to the board. If you, the report was uh, both the efficiency studies were sent to the entire board. If you wanna take a look at, please give input to the finance uh, committee. Um, and we gave our input to, there were a couple of things that we thought uh, that were worth noting, noting that we might be able to send to the leadership team, um, and that was and and that was that was it. Chris did had some questions about what the COVID cost is. We don't know uh, what that is uh, yet. So once we have more information on on that, uh, we can have a deeper conversation of that how that's going to affect us. Um, and then I'll let Carrie and and Scott or Chris, if I forgot something. Sounds good to me. Me too. Uh, I have a question for Lori though. Lori? Yes. Um, if, if we um, take a motion to um, do something with the uh, fund balance funds, um, are we bound by that? Are those funds then dedicated to that purpose and cannot be undone? Or is um, it something that can be undone by a future board vote? It, from what we've had for past experience and in reviewing the wording on the warning that the voters have um, provided you with that authorization, you have the uh, ability to reserve them um, for purposes of operating the school, which is pretty liberal which means if you do act, you could undo it at a future date if you had changing needs. Okay, that's it, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, Lori. Yeah. And thank you, Flora. Um, Flora, what you were about to say? And last thing, it, if, and a question, I guess, directly to Kelly and Deborah, should we address the BIs right now or is there a later point on the agenda where we'd be looking at that? We do have a place on the agenda later on under personnel to address the BI additions, um, but I would like to, um, because it came to my attention just recently that there will be a, a few bids that will come forward that are time sensitive, one for the DDC controls and U32 and the other for the paving project at Berlin. And um, in the past, I believe the board has given the superintendent the authority to approve the bids for a later affirmation by the board. And that would allow us to begin projects. There's several steps that we have to take, um, such as getting contracts arranged and set up. And the paving project is one that we really would like to get done this summer. And, um, and there will not be a meeting. Um, well, your meeting from the 15th is close to the time the bids are due, but it's, you know, we just wondered if you'd be willing to authorize the superintendent to accept that bid pending, um, you know, to allow us to begin those projects um, just because of the time sensitive nature of them. Um, and if you have any doubt in your mind how important that is, I can share the uh, email picture from one of our townspeople that um, showed what the condition of the parking lot in Berlin was on town meeting day. Uh, it's a high priority project, right, Aaron? Uh, <laughs> so we'd love it if you'd give us that flexibility, please. So, <clears throat> just to be just to be clear, you would want that motion um, now. just to provide the superintendent. Well, it is a it's a finance related item. Yes. Uh, 
So I would like to ask. And it's you to uh, it's under that. construction. Um, it's under the construction category four point three point yeah. three. Mm -hmm. So um, how how shall the um, how should the motion be form formulated then? Um, I think similar to the one that you provided for us in the last meeting when you gave me permission to, uh, or the future superintendent to uh, approve bids for fuel paper. And right. in this case, yeah. we're looking for construct approval. Of, it's authorized the superintendent to approve construction bids um, that occur during the months of June and July. And uh, so that's what we'd be requesting. Good. Um, if, if someone has easy access to page the minutes beginning on page 38 um, and maybe can um, uh, scroll through and find language that's consistent. It's on, it's on page 39, uh, 4.5. Mm -hmm. um, Chris moved to approve the authorization of the superintendent to approve bids. And then I would just substitute for construction in the months of June and July. Okay. okay. Um, who would like to move that? Um, I'll move that we authorize superintendent to accept bids for construction that are that arrive in June or July of 2020. Good. Second. Dorothy seconds. Great. Any further discussion? Lindy. I just have a question and Chris can answer this, I'm sure. If that let's just pretend that somebody comes along and makes up some new construction that we're not saying anything of expected or I don't, I don't know that it matters at all. You can identify the two projects. One of them is the that were in your report on page 18 uh, that will be coming forward. And this time, one is the DDC controls at U32, and the second is the Berlin paving project. So if you'd like to be more specific, that would be fine. Those are the only ones that will be coming due during this time. And the specificity to me could just be the construction projects as referenced in the board packet of June 17th or something like that. Um, I just thought it sounded a little broad to say construction. Let's build a yes. new school. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> Except uh, the friendly amendment. Excellent. Very good. And Dorothy, you go along with that. Great. OK. Um, thank you, Lindy. Any other discussion or um, clarifications? Floor. Just that I, I didn't want to spend more time, but I do want to tell you that we met with Bill. Uh, Ford was part of, and he gave us a construction update. And if you read through Deborah's in our package, you know, we have over 15 or 17 projects going on. I, in, you know, because it's such a beautiful day out and I'm hoping that we're going to be done quickly. I didn't want to elaborate on that, but it, uh, Bill Ford is our clerk of the works and he's taking good care of all our projects going on in our different schools right now. And we do have to look at uh, how we want to address next year. Uh, if there's any capital projects going on, we should be thinking about it to make a decision by September was his recommendation, the end of September, so that we can plan and get, have uh, more options of bidders uh, for next summer. That's it. Right. Thank you, Flora. Great. So if there are no other comments or questions, let's move to a vote. All those in favor of, appro of approving, authorizing the superintendent to accept bids for those two projects as referenced by Lindy um, and moved by Chris and seconded by Dorothy, please click your yes button if you're in favor and no if you're opposed. And I see on this occasion all yeses. Um, Jonathan, do you um, does your does your button click yes? He had his thumb up button. Uh, oh, he had his way. thumb up button. Yeah, he. I, some people are so good at Zoom that it just sails right over my head. Um, all right, thank you very much, everyone. Now we have another. Um, another pair of motions, actually, for the construction bid approval. If you go, if you check out page 19, at the bottom of that page, 
there is language for two motions. Um, would anyone like to make those motions, please? Sure, I'm, I'll make them. Approve the bid award for Danher floor restoration in an amount not to exceed $56,000. And approve the transfer uh, and the second motion. Should I do both together or? Oh, no, we, we can do both together, yeah. So it's one motion with two. <laughs> two parts. Two parts. Approve the transfer of 14000 from the capital fund to complete the funding for this project. Thank you, Floor. Second? Second. Second. Kari seconds. Great. Thank you. Um, just a bit ahead of you, Chris. Um, discussion on this one. If not, let's move to a vote. All in favor, please click yes. Opposed, click no, or or click that thumbs up on your on your screen if you're really good. Um, yeah, <laughs> thanks. Great. Okay. Um, once again, motion carries unanimously. Thank you, everyone. So. Um, Next, 4.4.1, as you may recall, has been um, shifted to the back end of our executive session 8.0. So, um, Jonas, would you like to take us through what remains? Yes. So, uh, just first, um, has everybody received the draft uh, agreement with the ESP union and the memo of understanding yeah. with the teachers union? We they were included in um, confidential board um, yeah. materials that yeah. were sent out in mm -hmm. advance. Yeah. Um, but I think yeah. both topics could be postponed until after. Yes, if you if you choose, Jonas. Um, for I mean, I, th I think I, I think we can knock out the uh, uh, the teachers union MOU. Um, that is, you know, m more than a pro forma um, document. Less, you know, more than boilerplate language. Um, but you know, a rather prosaic um, document. I believe, Deborah, correct me if I'm if I'm uh, misrepresenting this, but that brings our uh, uh, brings the way that we that, that healthcare is administered, you know, into um, uh, in harmony with uh, with state law. Is that an accurate right. summation? There was there is a um, um, there was a summary of the statewide health settlement that resulted from arbitration. Uh, and as you recall, all of our health insurance is now negotiated at the state level, not by districts. And the union, after the teacher's contract was passed, asked if this addendum could be included on their contract. And that's all that you're voting on. And in, it's also um, incorporated into the proposed ESP contract. So, um, if you would be willing to be agreeable to that, we would process the the agreement and and you authorize your chair to sign it, and we could go forward. Yeah. So 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 I you know I'd I'd like the board to approve the uh, the MOU with the teachers union uh, and discuss the the ESP uh, draft agreement um, during executive session. Very good. Oh, so um, <clears throat> you want to approve the the MOU now and then the other one after. Okay. Yeah. So how about a motion? Um, I move I move that we approve the memorandum of understanding with the teachers union as requested. I'll second it. Great. Chris moves, Lindy seconds. Thank you very much. Further discussion? No questions? In that case, let's move to a vote. All in favor, please click yes or a thumbs up. Um, opposed, click no, um, or I guess thumbs down. So, great. Um, I, see, I see universal yeses or thumbs up. Great, so the motion carries. Thank you. Um, now, uh, since 
the other negotiations action is reserved for later. Um, Jonas, uh, may we move on to policy? Absolutely. Great. Chris, would you like to lead us? Um, thank you, everyone. Uh, so we are on page 23 of the packet, and we have um, first reading of <clears throat> C47. But the first time I ask, anybody have any questions about the minutes from the policy committee meeting? So then we have first for first reading is uh, student exchanges C47. It is a recommended policy, and the uh, committee is recommending that the board consider adopting it. Uh, and I and I say that because there are we've been re reviewing some recommended policies that we are not recommending for the board to adopt, but but this one we are. Um, and so, any questions on C47? Hearing none, um, <clears throat> we will just present this again at our, our next meeting for um, adoption. So next up, we have um, second reading of um, three, uh, two different policies, C7 um, and C21. And in, um, in this we... case, second reading, correct, Chris? So this will require a yes. vote and the policy yes. is if approved, will go into will enter into force. Correct. So, should we um, then so get a motion? We do need a motion for C seven, which is student attendance, and C twenty one, search and seizure of students by school personnel. Great. Would you Would you prefer to do them separately or together? I think together. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve C7 and C21 together? I so move, this is Diane. Diane moves. Lindy, I'll second. Lindy seconds, thank you very much. Discussion. Uh, discussion on C7, school uh, student attendance policy. We at the committee had some uh, question on whether, um, at least I think it, yeah, it was this one, about the um, whether we would want to adjust it at some point if it turned out that because of the COVID and parents had inability to get into see medical providers or students had an inability to get into see medical providers to comply with the policy so that students um, were not being, um, you know, unfairly marked as unexcused absence because they didn't have the evidence to support their absence from a doctor that wasn't available. So we're just raising that, we're not asking that to be done now, but we may come back uh, if, it, if it appears to be a problem in the future uh, because of the COVID circumstances. Okay, hearing no, no uh, questions. Um, how about C21, uh, which is the search and seizure, um, policy, and it, it is the one that we had the discussion about clothing, uh, which is on the second page of the policy, top of page 34. I think we've addressed with the, our, our discussion from last time. Okay, hearing no comments or questions, um, Scott, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chris. Um, in that case, let's let's go to a vote. Um, all in favor of approving C7 student attendance and C21 search and seizure of students by school personnel, um, second reading, please click yes. If you're opposed, click no or thumbs down. Thumbs up, thumbs down. I'm seeing all green and thumbs in the upward direction. Um, I don't see anything else. Is there anybody who prefers to abstain from this one? 
Okay. In that case, it passes unanimously. Um, thank you very much, Chris. Thank so, thank you. Um, uh, we now, um, as Deborah pointed out earlier, um, this being the last meeting of uh, the last board meeting of the school year, um, and the policy committee having the charge of um, essentially reviewing and bringing to the board for approval the entire kit and caboodle of school district policies. And um, somehow, I, I don't know, they just, just are lazy or something. They didn't get through them. Um, just joking, Chris. And, and I, I think it was that. <laughs> okay, right. Um, I, what we're proposing to do is all of those policies that have not yet come before the board for um, for approval uh, that are that were existing in 2019 will be extended for another year so that the policy committee can um, can give them uh, the um, you know the same sort of serious consideration and deliberation that they've been giving to the ones they've looked at so far. Um, have I got that right, Chris? Um, in part, but in with part. the uh, understanding that as we go through the policies, we were pre presenting them to the board for adoption, and that the then adopted would supersede what we are extending. Very good. Okay. Um, so, thank you for that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, is that is that understood? This is just a provisional adoption for a year, okay. pending the action that the policy committee will take, and that the board will then. Um, take on the policy committee's recommendations. That's right. Okay. Um, uh, so I, I believe I need a motion. Uh, I'll move that. Thank you, Chris. Second? I'll second. Dorothy seconds. Thank you very much. So um, any, any discussion of this? Can you just tell me, Chris, what the verbiage is? Is, it, is that all it is, is move to extend the approval of all 2019 policies for one year? Yes. Okay, thanks. Thank you, Lisa. Um, any, any further discussion? If not, let's move to a vote. Uh, all in favor, yes or a thumbs up. All opposed, no or thumbs down. And again, um, it appears to be unanimous. Thank you very much, everyone. Great. All right. Now, um, before we go to the consent agenda, uh, I wondered if, if you know, we've been we've been just plowing away um, for almost an hour and a half. Do you want to take five minutes just to sort of uh, brief decompression, um, bio break, and then reconvene at seven thirty? Sure. Okay. All right. Let's do that. See you all in five minutes at seven thirty. So. Um, I'm hoping, yeah, as the um, as the window shades are pulled up, um, we can get to the consent agenda. In particular, uh, in the first place, the approval of the minutes of our last meeting of June third. Um, do we have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Floor moves. Second. Jonas, I, I, oh, thanks, Merlin. I, I saw Jonas's hand go up. Um, you'll have your chance next, if you like. Um, all right. So uh, floor moved. Jonas seconded the uh, approval of the minutes of June third that are um, that begin on page thirty-eight. Uh, any changes to the minutes? Any questions? If not. Let us go to a vote. All in favor, please click the green yes or the thumbs up. All opposed, red no or thumbs down. And I'm seeing once again, all green 
Yeah, all green and thumbs up. Thanks. That's great. Okay. So um, for the board orders, uh, if anyone has those handy and can make the the motion with the um, with the numbers, I have them open, Scott. Thank you, Lindy. Um, I make a motion to accept the board orders of June. Well, is it today's? Yeah, June seventeenth, twenty twenty, in the amount of two hundred five. Thousand five hundred ninety-six dollars sixty-four cents, and the capital one is fifty thousand five hundred ninety-seven dollars nine cents. Thank you, Lindy. Do we have a second? A second. Um, I, I think Marilyn gets it this time, Jael, but. <laughs> You'll have an opportunity to come too. Um, thank you. So, are, are there any questions about these board orders? As moved by Lindy and seconded by Marilyn. If not, let's move to a vote. All in favor, once again, green yes, thumbs up. Opposed, red no, thumbs down. And again, I'm seeing all green and um, none opposed. So um, the board orders pass. And once again, if you don't mind sending your, your email to Lori as in lieu of signature. Um, now we're at 6.0, personnel, action on personnel. Um, so approving hires, resignations, retirements. Um, are there any this time, Debbie? Uh, Deborah, pardon me. Yes. Um, we, we do have some, and they were in your materials sent separately from the packet. Mm -hmm. First, we have um, a new teacher nomination, which is actually um, the assignment of a continuing teacher, Julie McKinstry, to, as the reading interventionist. And... Um, this is possible because of the movement to part-time of our current reading interventionist uh, at DOE. Um, and the second item is the resignation of uh, one of our, um, with, of Jamie O'Hare, uh, East Montpelier, um, who has been working part-time for the last four or five years after um, a, a illustrious career and, and then a retirement to return. So this is a second retirement for Jamie. And um, we wish her the best as well. And and that that is it. Uh, can you remind me, Deborah, where uh, I'm then then we have I'm sorry, go ahead. Your question. Uh, the um the list of, of these personnel actions. Um, oh, um, let me, I can possibly quickly share it. It was an email to you separately in your packet. Um, in our packet, it only shows Julie McKinstry's. Right, and then there was a second revision because Jamie only recently retired. Um, just after the packet was sent out, it happened on Tuesday of this week, I believe. And Alicia um, and I felt that you would want to accept her resignation. Um, so that's the only difference from the packet, the original, and I think that Krista sent it out to you on Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday, as a second revised version. Right, okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, so we need a motion for this. Um, would anyone like to move these? So moved. Okay, Marilyn, <laughs> multitasking, it's great. Um, uh, second? I'll second it. Jael seconds, wonderful. Thank you, Jael. Um, any, any discussion or questions? I guess just thanking uh, Jamie O'Hare for her service for us. He was with us for many years. Yeah. Wonderful, yeah. Thank you. Likewise. Um, very good. So all in favor, once again, uh, yes or thumbs up. Opposed, no or thumbs down. 
Okay, I'm once again seeing only only green and thumbs in the upward direction. Oh, and uh, oh, uh, Alicia, I'm sorry, um, I, I missed your signal. Um, That's okay. It was very quick. I just wanted to say that Jamie has served at EMES for forty years, so it's been a long time. Wow, that yeah. sure is. Yeah, fantastic. Um, wow, it's like a lifetime. <laughs> With yeah. three, four, and five-year-olds, <laughs> <It's a lifetime. laughs> multiple lifetimes. Yeah, that's great. And it used okay. to be double session where she would have. 30 kids or more. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. Okay. So um, the next item, 6.2, is to approve non union staff compensation for 2020 2021. I would suggest that we uh, postpone action on that until following our executive session, if that would be all right. Very good. Is there any objection from the board? Otherwise, we'll just. Uh, Lop it into, um, it, lump it into the executive session business. Okay, very good. And then we have one additional item um, under personnel that was added when the agenda was amended, on, and it's uh, the document is on page forty-four of your update. Right before we go there, Deborah, um, sure. uh, Lisa, I think has a has something. Just sorry, I, I I can't find the name of the hire. Was it Julie Pritchard? Julie. No, it's Julie McKinstry. She's a current employee, but she's being, she's moving from a para part-time para part-time teacher position. She'll now be full-time teacher with her 0.5 appointment as the reading interventionist for Doty. Okay, so approving an increase in her full-time equivalency. Correct. And then approving the retirement of Jamie. Of Jamie. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Lisa. Okay, so um, as Deborah was saying, page 44, the uh, behavior interventionist positions. Um, uh, why don't we get a motion first and then we can discuss them. Would anyone like to move this edition? Um, I'll move it, Diane. Diane is moving. Um, and Flora is seconding. Thank you. Okay. Um, I, I perhaps uh, Deborah, I'll, um, if you want Kelly to speak, I'll. Um... Sure. Um, we did discuss this in our finance committee, um, and I think we had general consensus to to recommend it forward to the board. Um, but Kelly, if you're, I think you're here. Could you please uh, comment? And if not, I'd be happy to do so. I'm not sure if she's. Sure. Yeah, I'm here. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, so I had written the memo just asking um, to create two new BI or behavior interventionist positions um, to allow us to reduce um, a contracted service. Um, you know, again, I had asked to not talk too specifically about the contracted service at this point in time, simply because I've not had a conversation with them. Um, and in order to pull that off, um, I would need to add two new employees. And so we would be reducing a contract that actually currently has um, eight staff. And then, um, and it would have a, about a, a 70,000, uh, roughly, like I said, in the finance committee, not a Lori confirmed number, but uh, about a $70,000 savings. Before reimbursements, correct? Correct. Uh huh. Um, any questions from board members? Floor? Sorry. Uh, well, I just wanted we discussed it at the finance committee, and I, I think one of the things that Kelly described to us that we thought were pros is that it gives us more flexibility with the use of, of the staff, better oversight. Uh, quality and also they're able to help academically a little bit which they're not able to do right now when they're independent contractors right um other questions if not we can um we can move to a vote uh oh sorry chris i i see your
Um, I would like um, to ensure that um, if we approve these um, behavioral specialists, and I think we should, um, that we are also not continuing with the contract that they're supposed to replace. That that is, that is a certainty as opposed to a hope. Mm -hmm. These are annual contracts, which okay. means that they have to be renegotiated annually. So that will not be an issue. Great, thank you. Okay. So let the record show. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Okay, um, so uh, if you're ready for a vote then, uh, all in favor, once again, yes or thumbs up, opposed, no or thumbs down. And again, I'm seeing all, all green and thumbs up. Wonderful. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, um, now, get my bearings here. Future agenda items. Um, uh, Deborah, um, is there anything that we should be noting we, at this point? We spoke earlier about um, the special meeting, but that's already been decided, I think. Um, yes, correct, but, correct, thank um, you. Sure, other than that, um, I don't, I think there's anything in particular that we need to attend to. We uh, Several things have been put off to the retreat. Um, and then the rest of the, the board's work, I think, is well outlined in their committee, as well as, um, you know, their plans to proceed with uh, a number of new projects this fall. So great. Of course that. OK, very good. So um, at this point, uh, I would entertain a motion to go into executive session for multiple purposes that are covered under the law, including um, contracts and um, evaluations and um, uh, uh, attorney-client uh, communications. Um, it, it's, a, it's a bit of a grab bag, but it's all it's all legit. <laughs> Would um, I move? That we uh, oh, oh, sorry. Session for those purposes. Thank you, Jonas. Um, do we have a second? And then I'll take Alicia's question. Floor seconds. Uh, Alicia, before we vote on it, yes, you have a question. Yeah, sorry, Deborah. Can you just check your private chat for a second? I just want to make sure that got included. Yes, thank you. Um, so that there is a student matter as well um, to be addressed under the li long list of topics. Okay. And Alicia, perhaps you could join us for the very first few moments sure. of that meeting yeah. just to assist with that. Um, yep. Thank you very much. Yes, and, and um, uh, as part of this executive session, uh, obviously, Deborah, you would be there. Um, and Alicia, at least for the very beginning, um, Kelly and Jen as well, or? No, I don't think anyone else is needed um, this okay. evening. No, okay. I think just uh, myself and uh, and then we we may have action coming out regarding contracts. Right, and, and uh, Lori, is she, will she be necessary for this as well, for the contract? Um, I don't think so, but we can invite her in later. I think we're okay. Okay, very okay. good. Mm -hmm. So um, ex understood everybody, executive session, um, Jonas moved, floor seconded. Uh, Alicia will be in for the first part of it. Deborah will be in for the whole of it. And that's, that's it. Um, all in favor, please once again, um, hit your yes or a thumbs up. Opposed, um, no or a thumbs down. And I have the room set up. When you're ready, I'll click the open and you can just join. Okay, uh, I, I don't see any, any uh, adverse responses. So um, the motion carries, we're in executive session as of now. It would so appear, good.
So we have a number of actions to take. Um, should we go with 4.4.1 first off? That would be the approval of the ESP contract. Um, do we have a motion? I'll move. So, Dorothy, can we, Dorothy, can we say that you move to approve the administ? Uh, sorry, can we say that you move to um, approve the collective bargaining agreement with the ESP union contingent upon future union ratification? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Dorothy moves. Second. Oh, Jael seconds. No. Jael is gesturing broadly towards her camera. Um, does uh, anybody second? Second. Thank you, Stephen. All right. Um, any further discussion of this? If not, let's uh, go to a vote. Uh, all in favor, please click yes or thumbs up. Opposed, click no. And I am seeing only thumbs up and green yeses. Great. Thank you very much. All right. Now, here's where it starts to get a little fuzzy for me. Um, I have one. Uh, Jonas? Yeah, we need a motion to approve the administration's recommendation regarding a student matter. Perfect. Thank you very much. Um, who would like to move that? I, I will move that. Chris will move. Floor, are you seconding? Fl Chris moves. Floor seconds. Um, I don't believe there will be any more discussion. So if you would like to go to a vote, green, yes, or thumbs up, we'll do it. Red, no, or thumbs down to oppose. And I see all green. Um, very good. All right. So um, the Scott. Yes, Jonas. We thank motion, you. We need a motion to approve the administration's recommendation for non-union support staff contracts. Excellent. Who would like to make that motion? I so move, Diane. Diane moves. Second, please. Second. Um, second, Chris. Okay. Um, any further discussion? If not, let's go to the vote. All in favor, please click yes. Thumbs up. Opposed, no. Um, and the motion carries. Thank you, everyone. Next, Jonas. We need to <laughs> Thank you. approve a retirement. We need to approve a retirement. Do we need to say who it is, Deborah? We do. Okay. Do we need to say when the retirement is effective? Yes. We do. Okay. Um, uh, so, uh, not only that we um, accept the irrevocable uh, letter of resignation and retirement for Lori Bebo effective June 30, 2021. Very good. Second. Dorothy seconds. Um, thank you, Lindy. Uh, so, all in favor? I, I assume there's no further discussion. All in favor, please. There is your... further discussion. Ah, okay. Stephen. I would, I would like to add to this with um, uh, sincere appreciation and uh, maybe that's enough sincere appreciation for her years of work. That's beautiful. Do you, do you accept the friendly amendment, Chris? Absolutely. And Dorothy? And, 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 and fully endorse it. Amen. Thanks. Uh, any other discussion or modifications? In that case, uh, vote yes, green button or thumbs up, no red button or thumbs down, and all green and thumbs up. Thank you very much, everyone. So Jonas, does that do it for the, um, for the motions that are it necessary does. for us to do? Thank you very much for keeping such um, careful track. Um, all right. So 
Uh, 9.0, that, that brings us to the end of our last board meeting of the school year um, with mixed emotions, I think. Uh, so I just wanted to thank um, all of the board members, uh, our superintendent, Deborah Taylor, leadership team, principals, administrators, members of the public, If uh, Dave, if you're still there, um, media, thank you for hanging in there with us on these late nights and um, sometimes hard discussions. Um, greatly, greatly appreciate it and wish you all a fantastic summer. Um, I hope it's happy, productive, and that your garden grows fruitfully. Thanks everyone. Um, adjourned by consensus at 9.30. Yes. Take good care all. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Likewise.